Ooh. What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of Attack once again, and welcome back to yet another Talking Head video. You guys keep asking me, what should I mine with my four gigabyte GPUs? I'm going to show you guys the tools that I use to make these types of decisions and hopefully just teach you to be able to do it for yourself. We'll get into it right after a word from our sponsor. At this point, most of you should be familiar with today's sponsor, Prime XBT. As such, they want me to take this time to provide a short update on the Prime XBT platform. If you remember, they have a fantastic copy trading module where you can follow the strategies of established traders. There has been massive volatility in the market recently, but you can find traders that make money on both sides of the market and follow their strategies. It doesn't matter if the market is going up or down, there are always opportunities. Pay attention to the descriptors. For example, if the word short is contained within the name, it's likely the trader is on the bearish side of the market. And during a falling market, it's better to follow a strategy where the trader leans towards trading bear markets. Register an account with Prime XBT, take a look and do your own research. The platform contains many statistics to help determine which trader suits your style, but ultimately it's your decision on how you invest. Remember, any form of investing comes with significant risks, so do your own research. Use promo code SONOFATECH at sign up for a 50% bonus. Welcome back. So starting things off, I like to use minor stat. And the reason why I like to use minor stat for figuring this out is because it'll tell you that the DAG size is too large. Now the hard part is, is that there are four gigabyte and eight gigabyte variants of a lot of GPUs like the RX 470 and the RX 480. So you have to pick a card that doesn't have that option. And in today's case, I chose the AMD RX 460, which only has four gigabyte sizes. And basically what I can see here is this red notification that the DAG size is too large. So that means I can just keep scrolling down until I find one that doesn't have the DAG size too large. Now recently, Ergo did upgrade or change their consensus mechanism or their algorithm, excuse me, to AutoLycos 2 which is allowing for cards with less VRAM to mine on them. Previously, I believe it was like six gigabytes or above, and that has been resolved now. So it is right now going to be the most profitable on Polaris GPUs. That's gonna be your RX 460, 470, 480, 560, 570, and 580s. And you want to come here and check that and see, you know, essentially, uh, which coins are going to be the easiest to mine uh, profitability wise. There is a caveat, which is how easy is it to liquidate the any given coin that you are mining. Once you get outside of mining Ethereum, m converting to fiat can be a lot more difficult. Ergo has some good and promising bridges that make this a little bit easier, as well as if you looked at the talk with the dev, they also had essentially a lot in the works with Cardano. This is just going to make Ergo, I think, easier to liquidate than some of the other options, even like Ravencoin. Uh, and that's because Ravencoin seems to be not working on a lot of bridges and any of the exchanges that it is in currently doesn't have deposits to convert to fiat. For example, crypto.com, you can buy Ravencoin, but and you can sell it within the app, but you can't deposit to it or pull out of it, which is pretty frustrating. I've mentioned this to both crypto.com as well as Ravencoin, and hopefully, uh, you know, <laughs> it'll get figured out. And, the, and, and once that kicks through, Ravencoin will probably be the easiest to liquidate because it'll already be in crypto.com. Now I have some GTX 1063 gigabytes. And so I've been looking already at what I want to put those on. And personally, I'm going to be putting them on Ravencoin, not on Ergo. Uh, reason being is that we have a halving coming up at the end of the year of 2021 in December, where basically the mining rewards for Ravencoin will be cut in half. Anytime a halving happens, the price of any given cur cur cryptocurrency uh, that does go through having typically goes up. So that's why I want to mine before the having happens so that essentially I can have the highest rewards and then hold on to that Raven coin for that having and then hopefully be able to liquidate at a higher price. That being said, they will be having a DAG size growth. So you need to look for searching for DAG file size on any given coin. 
Here is Ravencoin's DAG size, uh, for example. And as you can see here, GPUs with three gigabytes of RAM will stop mining Ravencoin on September 14th of 2021. Now for your four gigabyte cards, you're gonna be good until August 9th, 2023. So you have a couple of years there to go ahead and continue mining Ravencoin on your four gigabyte GPUs. It would be a miss for me to not mention Ethereum Classic as well in this particular case because Ethereum Classic recently did change their algorithm to support four gigabyte GPUs. This is a very smart move because it allowed them to increase the security on their network for people that had four gigabyte GPUs get kicked off the network when Ethereum's DAG size went above four gigabytes of VRAM. And that was the strategy behind it. That being said, Ethereum Classic doesn't even have the profitability of one of these other coins, right? So you do still have a, an advantage, at least from a profitability standpoint, on other coins, albeit it's harder to liquidate. Ethereum Classic is a little bit easier to liquidate because it's been around so long. It means that it does have listings. It's easy to deposit to things like crypto.com and Coinbase and basically be able to liquidate straight out into fiat. And so there is that advantage for mining Ethereum Classic that should be noted. But as it sits right now, if we even looked at like some of the lower, lower end cards on Ethereum Classic, the profitability is not good or not there at all. So if we did like ETC here, you'll see that like on the RX 464 gigabyte, for example, uh, after a power cost of 10 cents a kilowatt hour, you're actually losing money uh, mining Ethereum Classic currently as it sits right now. And that's important to pay attention to. So at the end of the day, what should you be doing to decide on what to mine with your four gigabyte GPUs that have been left over? You should be checking out sites like Minerstat.com. These tools are there for a reason to help you navigate the space, especially when it comes to mining cryptocurrency. I'll leave a link down in the description so you can go do your own research and figure it out because these numbers will always be shifting. I should mention though too, at the end of the day, it is very difficult because if you see a fly-by-night coin come up in profitability, it's more than likely going to dump back down. We've talked about this before. A lot of that can also end up happening if there was a problem on an exchange where deposits or, or withdrawals have been restricted for a particular coin. Um, well, I'm trying to recall exactly which coins has it happened with in the past, but we have seen it happen with very dead coins. I believe Dubai coin was one of them and that coin was completely dead. But what ended up happening is there was a report within the API on like coin market cap that had the price really high because there was a little bit of it listed. So it reported on what to mine and miner stat as super profitable. But the, in reality, you couldn't actually liquidate it at all, so there was no point in mining it. Additionally, we have to mention the fact that you do typically, in most pools, uh, get more cryptocurrency and more shares by being on the network longer. And this is included in both PPS, PPS Plus, and actually I shouldn't even say both, but also PPLNS. So, Profit switching, which was something that was done early on in cryptocurrency mining, where you would jump to a more profitable coin and just automatically profit switch, doesn't work as well. And in that case, if you're looking at trying to do that, you may want to just hit up NiceHash because NiceHash will automatically do the profit switching for you. A caveat there is there have been issues with NiceHash being hacked in the past and users not getting their Bitcoin out of NiceHash. So make sure that you withdraw frequently if you're going to use NiceHash and be very cautious. If you want to do it all yourself, then you want to pick a coin probably that you believe in, whether that be Ravencoin or Ergo or whatever it may be, because when you see it, drop below, let's say you were doing Ergo and you see Ravencoin go above Ergo, when you see it drop below, you don't want to have that antsy pantsy, I'm going to switch algos real quick. Because then at that point, once you start getting into these lower 
coins, you are going to be seeing a fluctuation day to day between which is more profitable and you need to just hold fast and stay on that pool and that's going to be important. So I hope this was helpful and kind of gives you an idea of where to look for for what you should mine with your four gigabyte GPUs as well as what I'm going to be mining. I do believe in Ravencoin so I do want to put my three gigabyte GPUs on there for as long as I can. That being said, I do have a lot of issues with Ravencoin, as you guys should know too, and I'm not completely sold on it. Ergo, we have talked about and we've done the interviews with the devs. One of the big questions I have currently with Ergo in particular is going to be surrounding that whole idea of ASICs coming onto the network. It does sound like if ASICs were to be developed for Ergo, that they wouldn't necessarily swap algorithms to block them. So as a GPU miner, I do lean towards Ravencoin because Ravencoin is committed to blocking ASICs on the network and have shown in the past that they're working towards it. That being said, it is also a very power demanding algorithm and is harder on the GPUs than say like Ethereum or even Ergo. So you do have to take that into account as well. Hope that covers it all. Thanks for watching. I will see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, you can watch more by clicking this playlist up here or go ahead and subscribe.